Hello, welcome back. Today it's time to fire up the forge again. It was quite some time since I was in there last. I have been totally busy with woodworking because of the renovation and other types of jobs. But I decided to start making the hinges for the double doors today. It's a, a nice autumn day. Not windy at all, which is nice because the forge is sort of openly built. And I don't like working in strong winds. And it's not too hot, of course, since it's autumn. Perfect day for blacksmithing. So let's get on with it. It's good to make use of all your leftover products. Charcoals I made myself. A lot of times I use scrap wood. There are two small pieces to become firewood. So I put them in, a, in an oil barrel and make charcoal out of them instead of bringing them into the home and putting them in the fireplace there. And also these. Uh, Small twig like things, they're just yeah. small cut off pieces from the carpentry as well. Perfect for starting a fire in the forge, and uh, of course, we always peel the bark parts off our firewood and save that for lighting fires. The bellows I use and built myself is a double action type of bellows that uh, appeared in Europe around uh, the 17th century, I believe. Maybe a bit earlier. And it works pretty well. When you pump it, the lower part both fills up the top chamber and blows air out through the front into the hearth. Well, if I pump it really hard at this, I, I have a, a box here on top of it filled with sand. It acts as a weight so I can calibrate how much air pressure I create. But if I pump it hard, you can see that it fills up the upper part and then I can let it go and fiddle with my tools and get back to pumping before it's empty, so I get a constant airflow. Very good if you're working on your own and don't want to use an electric fan. I sometimes use coal as well, but they have become a bit hard to get by. And uh, it's much more unhealthy to burn coals and just to use wooden charcoal. And if you want to work from a historical point of view, which I sometimes do, then uh, wooden charcoal is what you want to use if you're doing late Iron Age or medieval type of forgery. steel bars are the makings of the hinges. 
gonna be great, I think. It's totally possible that I end up with using coals this time. It's a bit easier to get the material up to heat with coals. It takes a bit more time and effort with the charcoal. We'll see. But because of the unhealthy smoke from the coals I prefer using this. And I think it's nice to be able to just create your own energy source. I have to find somebody that sells coals if I want to use that. Charcoal I can make myself just outside of the forge here. Getting a bit cold now. This round stock is the material for the pins, so I will shape this piece around it. It's been a while since I did anything like this, I have to confess. <clears throat> but then again, I'm not really after perfection. I'm totally fine with charming and rustic, as long as it works properly, and I think it will. Making basic hinges isn't all that difficult really.
funny how things turn out sometimes. As I mentioned, I haven't been here for quite some time, but when I was looking for the tool I needed, I stumbled across these perfectly nice hinges of exactly the same type as I was planning to make. And I have four of them. So uh, <laughs> I guess I will be using these. save time and since I have made them my plan wasn't to let them lay here in the forge and just rust away it actually saves me quite a lot of work so I can get back to finishing the workshop so uh, I got to show you how to make this piece <laughs> anyway so let's press on and make the pins for these because I don't have any pins for them. But this is like half the work done already here. Perfect. We just save these making some strap hinges for another day. And uh, Press on with the pins. Nice.
you are working with pretty thick stock that's a bit short it transports the heat to the end you are grasping so you have to quench it every once in a while eventually I might have to use a glove but I prefer not to it's better to feel the heat before it's getting too late Trying to make a somewhat leaf like or disc shaped pad here. It's going to be one of the fastening points for the pins. So I'm going to put a hole in that for nail. Well, it was quite some time since I did any work like this. So uh, progress is a bit slow. I'm pretty far from perfect.
I had to uh, put on the glove for a while there. I use it when the stock is uh, right in the middle, when it's a little bit too short to handle without the glove and too long to handle with a pair of pliers. But now I'm working with shorter stocks, so I'm switching to the pliers. So I don't need this anymore.
I'm going to drive this chisel through this 15 millimeter square stock. I'll do it from both ends. And then I'm going to shape that hole round by driving the square stock over a cone. And that hole is supposed to fit over the pins I just made. And then this will be uh, shaped like a large nail basically with a little bit of S shape to it so it bites better into the wood and that's what's gonna hold the pins to the door posts. Wouldn't hurt to have a helping hand. Or some sort of contraption to strap the stock to the anvil. A chain attached to the wooden log and then over the anvil and down to the stirrup. And you can hold it with one foot. That's something I've been thinking about making. It's almost starting to show on this side now, but I need to get it a little bit further through. Just stay put.
Finally. Now it's a matter of making this round stock fit the hole. But before I take it to its final size, I will cut this off, make the spike, because this is supposed to be shrunk onto the pin. And once I've done that, I cannot heat it up again because then the shrink joint will loosen up. going to have to put some coals on the fire because it's a bit difficult to get the proper heat for this heavy stock. So now things are about to get a bit smoky. Burns a lot hotter. I'm going to do the other way around with the next one. Make the point first.
I've drawn the second one out to point now and also made a slight S shape and that will make it bite much better into the wooden post. Hope I didn't exaggerate it too much because then it can split the post. This might be a bit much actually. I'll take it down a little bit. And now I'm going to cut it somewhere here and uh, put a hole through it just the other way around as I did the first one. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get it on here now. It's a bit too easy, but uh, it might work out. Well, you obviously can't see this, but I'm quenching it now. And hopefully it will shrink to a tight fit. Hmm. Well, it's not the prettiest, but uh, that's the idea anyway. Now I'm gonna do the other three as well, see if they turn out a little bit better looking than this one. Still, it will function as planned, I have no doubt about that. But in order to make them look nice, <laughs> you have to keep doing this on a slightly more regular basis than I have done in the recent times. Right. On to the next ones. I'm going to let them lay here on the stones and cool down. Hope you enjoyed it and that you feel a little bit inspired to try some blacksmithing yourself if you haven't already done that. As I said, you don't really have to be an expert to start making useful stuff if you want to. You're really good at it though you have to <laughs> put some real time and effort into it. For me it's just nice to be able to make at least basic stuff improves my sense of self-reliance really. That's mostly my goal with it. Not to become an expert but to be able to get by and do a lot of things myself. That's my take on it anyway. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you <laughs> liked what you saw and feel free to subscribe also if you want to get notifications when I post more videos. <laughs>